clicking the button, obviously, while I've been wired up. Oh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for hanging in there before morning. Uh, afternoon tea is coming soon. Uh, I'd first like to acknowledge my colleagues, Ken Clark and Megan Lewis, and also uh, Dooner, who uh, requested and funded this project. Uh, this work also supports the broader project ecosystems dependent on shallow groundwater systems in the Western Rivers, known um, in the short form as the Shallow Groundwater Project. And the uh, premise of this um, investigation is that vegetation production is thought to be one of the main drivers of ecosystem function in this area. So our particular um, study area encompasses three uh, catchments. We've got Macumba in the north, Needs Catchment in the centre, and Dwarana Margaret Creek in the south. And you can see the study area here in the mid north of the state. Uh, the only town in the study area is Udnadatta. Uh, we've got Cooper Pedy in the southwest, and uh, famous for opal mining, and Roxby Downs, more famous for copper mining in the south. Um, the area has a desert climate, so it's got mild winters and hot summers. Uh, annual rainfall is typically about 100 to 200 mils, uh, but it's very erratic and um, significant rainfall events can occur in any month of the year. Um, because of this, uh, vegetation in the area is very limited. Where it does occur, it tends to be a mixture of um, kinopod, um, gidgee, and low um, mulga woodlands. Um, what else about the study area? Oh, we've got a um, conservation park in the southeast, um, Man Springs Con Conservation Park, and another one in the um, northeast, which includes Dalhousie Springs. I think I've covered uh, it's a pastoral area, sheep in the north, and uh, sheep and cattle in the south, and I think I've covered everything else there. Um, the area encompasses part of three bioregions. <coughs> so we've got the Stony Plains, accounts for the majority of the area. Uh, it's got low gibber plains and crusty red duplex soils. Then we've got the edge of the Simpson Streslecky Doomfield bioregion in the sort of yellowy brown there, um, with Doomfields and calcareous earths. And then the Paderka area of the Fink bioregion in the northwest, uh, which has got sandier soils. So the aim of this particular uh, project was to characterize the geographic distribution and temporal response of vegetation in both the terrestrial and aqu aquatic ecosystems in this area. And to do this, we developed a GD index. And what we are attempting to do is identify and map on a pixel basis areas that stay green after prolonged uh, dry periods um, with the assumption that these are most likely associated with groundwater availability. And to do this, um, we used the NDVI, uh, as has already been mentioned, as the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. It's an index of greenness. And then areas, uh, oh, sorry, periods that um, had significant rainfall events were excluded. Um, so we were looking for areas that were above a particular threshold of NDVI that was indicative of actively growing vegetation. So for the NDVI data, we used MODA, the um, MODIS um, satellite imagery. Uh, the MODIS imagery is collected on a daily basis over this area, uh, but the NDVI product um, composites 16 days at a time, so to um, eliminate cloud um, affected images. So we've got one NDV modus image per 16 days. Uh, pixel size is 250 by 250 meters and the data was available from 2000 and we collected it up to June 2015 which resulted in 353 images or asters. Um, in this area, um, west, uh, west of Lake Eyre, we'd expect um, NDVI values to be in the region of 0 0.2 to 0 0.5. Uh, some occasionally go up as far as 0 0.7. Uh, areas below that um, are bare soil or dead vegetation and um, negative values are water. 
So this is an example of just one of these NDVI composite images, and this was for um, February the 18th to March the 5th, 2015. So you can see it's a pretty low vegetation um, index, um, and there's a couple of greener, oops, sorry, just a couple of greener areas along some of the creeks, and generally in the northwest it's a little greener than the rest of the area. The rainfall data we used was the gridded um, AWAP da uh, daily rainfall, and this is an interpolation of the rainfall data from the bomb stations. Pixel sizes for this data are five by five kilometers, and we downloaded the data from 98 to 2015, and that gave us 6,000 plus uh, rasters. And this is an example of one of those for that um, study area. And the little blue dots there, oops, sorry. The blue dots are the uh, actual um, rainfall, bomb rainfall stations. So we're, seeing, we're in an area where there's relatively few rainfall stations for the interpolation. But we are lucky that there are any, any at all, really. OK, so the GDE um, tool relies on three principles. So first, we've got our greenest threshold. So we're looking for areas that are green enough uh, to indicate uh, growth that's reliant on, uh, that has access to water. So it can either be surface soil or ground water. Um, we're also looking at significant, what we call significant rainfall events. So um, rainfall within a relatively short uh, space of time uh, that is enough to uh, bring on a green flush. And then uh, a dry period following that where um, the soil moisture and uh, ground moisture have disappeared and anything that's still green is um, probably um, accessing groundwater. So that's the, the principle. So the GDE index tool itself is written in Python script. So a user starts up the tool and all they have to do is input four variables. So the NDV threshold that they're interested in um, and then to define the significant rainfall event, sorry, if I'm doing the wrong. Uh, they put in the number of days and the rainfall, rainfall threshold of interest. I'll explain these a little bit more in a minute. And then how long the dry period they want. Um, and then there's 10 processing steps. It churns away and chucks out the results at the end. And the thing about the tool is you can put in any combination of uh, inputs that you like. So you can experiment with it and look at different scenarios. Uh, I'm just going to look at one particular scenario today and I'll just show you uh, why we came up with these figures to start with. Okay, here we're looking at the green dots here are the 16-day compos composites of, N of NDVI, so ranging from 0 up to 0 0.3. And here we've got the daily rainfall data and it rarely is above 10 mils in any particular day. So this year here, 2001, was a particularly wet year. Um, you can see the base level of NDVI is around about 0 0.5. So each of those dots is represent, each of these green dots is representing the average NDVI for the entire um, study area. Um, and you can see after a significant rainfall event, there is um, an increase in NDVI and then it gradually peters off again. Um, in 2006 was a particularly dry year. We had one event here where it just got over the 10 mils, but apart from that there was essentially really nothing more than a sprinkling. And you can see that the base level for the entire study area of NDVI was around the 0 0.15, so lots of bare soil and dead vegetation. Um, there will be small pockets of green vegetation within that, but that's the average for the study area. And in the end here, uh, you can see the entire 15 years of data, and you see the peaks and troughs following the um, significant rainfall events, particularly this one here. So based on this, um, we decided that we wanted to set our NDVI threshold to be 0 0.2. So we're looking for any um, areas where the NDVI is 0 0.2 or greater. Uh, we defined a significant rainfall event to be, based on these sort of figures here, 
um, any seven day period where the cumulative rainfall is more than 25 mils. So based on um, looking at these graphs, we, we decided that that was a reasonable, um, they were reasonable parameters to use. Um, and the dry period we set at six months or 180 days. Uh, so there are 10 steps. I'm not going to go through them in detail. Uh, so the first was to find how many of the NDVI rasters did each, in how many of the NDVI uh, images did the pixel reach the NDVI threshold. Um, so we can see here, in the majority of cases, it was very few times, less than a handful. Uh, the northwest tended to be um, greener in general, so that's the, the uh, Fink bioregion. The next thing we needed to do was calculate in how many periods was a pixel in a dry period. So we've got um, each day, each daily rainfall we decided was it a uh, a day where the previous seven days had had a significant rainfall event or not, and then going back six months, had there been any significant rainfall in the six months previous. So we can see um, there tended to be uh, more dry, long dry periods in the south and the north. And the north is influenced by monsoonal uh, systems that come down from the tropics. And fin almost finally, how many periods uh, how many times were dry periods above the, th the NDVI threshold? So this is showing the number of times any individual area um, had 180 days dry. Uh, without a significant rainfall event um, and was above the NDVI threshold of 0 0.2 at the end of that period. And how many times did that occur right through that 15-year um, sequence? And the final step then was to calculate that as a percentage. So we can see the majority of the area um, never got above that uh, threshold in dry periods. Um, the higher values tend to follow along the creek lines and also in this area in the northwest. And these areas here, which are quite patchy, are actually very low values. They, they, that's only occurred you know, less than 5% of the time. Um, I'll just go back there. Uh, the area with the highest values was Dalhousie Springs, which is the Mount um, Springs complex in the northwest, in northeast. And some of these pixels were permanently above the th threshold of 0 0.2. So 100% uh, of the time, they stayed green in those extended dry periods. And as I said, um, you can input um, any combination of variables into the uh, run of the model that you're interested in. And I'm just looking here at keeping the dry period the same, so defining it as any 180 days where there hadn't been a significant rainfall event of 25 mils within seven day period. Um, but I changed the NDVI values. So uh, the first one that we've been looking at, the NDVI threshold was set at 0 0.2. As we see, that's probably a bit high for the um, Fink area. And when you set it to 0 0.3, it's looking uh, a bit more reasonable. And you can look at 0 0.4. So apart from um, you know, trying to get one, one area that's looking, one value, set of values that's looking reasonable, you can use it to interrogate your data. Uh, you know, what areas uh, stay persistently very green as opposed to just barely green. 
or you know what's the um, what stays green after three months or what stays green after six months or three weeks so you can interrogate the data get lots of um, different outputs and compare them and build up your knowledge of the area so in conclusion uh, the GDE index tool has shown great potential to be able to identify uh, shallow groundwater ecosystems in the Western Lake Air Basin. Um, the results need to be quanti quantitatively assessed in the field still, and further investigation will determine which parameters, so those four variables, are most appropriate for each area. And it may be, as we've seen, um, be necessary to define the variables for the different regions. So the pink region is obviously a little bit different to the rest of the area. It's got the sandier soils, which makes water more available for plants if there is a, a um, rainfall event. Um, or if you repeat the analysis periodically, it'll help monitor the um, health of the Western Gap. And uh, the results can be used to better understand water, val water balance of the uh, Great Artesian Basin. And the um, the variations in the GDE index that we've seen can be used to guide um, further field sampling um, projects. Um, and lastly, the GDE index tool itself can be used in any area where you've got raster rainfall and NDVI data. Thank you. We are out of time, but Dorothy is the last talker, which means that you can ask questions yeah. instead of going to afternoon tea, if you so desire. Any questions? Afternoon tea sounds good. Afternoon tea sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you.